our press conference that's really focused on the expiration of the Bangladesh Accord. Um, I am Aisha Berenblatt, the CEO of Remake. We're just going to give a minute or so to allow people to join. We are here with some incredible union leaders, uh, Nazma Akhtar and Kalpana Akhtar, and we're really looking forward to answering all your questions. Um, but we're just going to give press a few more minutes to join. So please do bear with us. All right, it's a minute after the hour and I want to be really respectful of everyone's time. So good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on your time zone. And thank you so very much for all of you taking some time to join us today on our press conference. To, it's really focused on the expiration of the Bangladesh Accord and what that means for garment makers. Um, a little bit of context, um, we are going to be recording this call simply because there was high press interest in wanting to cover and really hear from the panelists today. Um, so we will be sharing on the press recording with um, colleagues who couldn't be here. Um, in terms of this call, you all know, uh, or some of you may know that as one of the people behind the Pay Up Fashion Coalition, I'm also here with Elizabeth and Nazma, who are the other folks behind the Pay Up Coalition. Action two of our demand was about keeping workers safe. And when we think about keeping workers safe. This is not just about the physical safety of the building, but we're also looking at issues of wage theft, of gender-based violence, of union busting, and we're going to address much of that today. So that's the context in which we're having this call. Um, as most of you will know, the Bangladesh Accord was a landmark agreement, which for the first time brought brands and unions to the table with accountability baked into the system post Rana Plaza. Um, it is very tragic to us as activists that it took so long um, and something as terrible as Rana Plaza and the Tazreen fire for the accord to come into play. Um, eight years since the accord has been there, we know that a lot of progress has been made. We know that buildings have become safer. But by the 31st of May, we are set for the accord to expire. And so what we wanted to do here today is to really introduce you to the frontline women who are really fighting for the rights and dignity of garment makers who are there doing the union organizing and to tell you what the accord means to them and what they think about its expiration. So this is really to bring their voices to the forefront. I'm going to in, uh, introduce our wonderful panelists in a second, but before that, I wanted to bring up my co-moderator, Elizabeth Klein. Hi, thank you so much, um, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, that was just a wonderful introduce, uh, introduction, Aisha. And I, I really want to thank Nazma and Kalpona and Taslima for being here with us today. So one of the other actions um, of Pay Up Fashion is giving workers center stage. That's um, one of the main reasons why we've put this uh, press conference together today is so that you can hear directly from the people that the accord was set up to benefit and some of the people who've been really instrumental in its success. Uh, I also want to mention that we did invite um, the BGMEA. We wanted to have the trade group perspective and the industry perspective here as well. Um, and, you know, at the last minute, they decided to withdraw their statement. Um, but we have uh, such a wonderful conversation. Um, ahead of us. And we, we also invited H&M to speak as well. Um, so so we, we really do want to have a dialogue. We understand that there's um, multiple perspectives on the accord, um, but we are here today to talk about the, um, you know, the, the, the workers perspective here on this issue. So uh, yeah, on that note, I think we can, we can get started. Did Taslima, is Taslima with us now? Um, yes. Just having some, okay. She's so having some technical difficulties, we'll work on that. But before we get started in true remake style, one of the things that we wanted to do was really center the voices of the very people that the accord was set up to keep safe. 
because of time zones and where they are based, it was difficult for us to have them directly here on Zoom, especially with Wi-Fi troubles. And so uh, one of the survivors of Rana Plaza and one of the survivors of the Tazreen factory fire have sent a video message for you all to watch. I'm going to go ahead and play that. Um, and then we will get started because, you know, for us, it's always about let's hear directly from the very people that these terrible industrial accidents um, have really wreaked havoc in their lives and what the accord meant to them. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And please bear with me as technology always is. भवन दस तला जीवन जापन करते खुबी मानवता जीवन जापन करते शारिक अवस्था खूब खराब हमारे फैमिली खुबी खराब अवस्था जीवन जापन करते वृद्ध बाबा पचासी बस बस अन्न जमीन क्ष कर खुबी मानवता जीवन चलते संसार अवस्था खूब खराब अवस्था चलते ऐले प्रतिबंधी दूटा ऐले निजे प्रतिबंधी दुर्घटना प्लस कारण निजे हाँ चला करते समस्या अनेक ओष खेते हैं मानसिकारा क्षतिपूरण सुरक्षा कष्ट मालिक पक्ष श्रमिक देखेंोचना दायित्व पालन कर मालिक संगठन 
Thank you everyone for allowing us to center the voices of the survivors of Rana Plaza and Tazreen. And with that, I'm going to bring up our wonderful panelists. Um, we have Nazma Akhtar, who is the founder and director of the Awaj Foundation. Um, we have Tazlima Akhtar, who is the president of the Bangladesh Garment Worker Solidarity, as well as an award-winning photographer who was there not only on the day of Rana Plaza, but has spent much of her career documenting the lives of garment makers, as well as being an activist. And we have Kalpana Akhtar, the founder and director of the Bangladesh Center for Worker Solidarity. Um, welcome everyone, and we are so glad that you could be here. So Taslima, let's start with you. Take us back to the day that you were documenting the Rana Plaza collapse. What did you see here and bear witness to? Uh, thank you. Can you hear me, Aisha? We can hear you, Taslima. Yeah, I have some trouble with uh, my laptop, so I'm now trying through my mobile. So actually, all of you know that um, only 10 days ago, the eighth anniversary of uh, Rana Plaza collapse day, uh, we observed, and when we uh, look back on that day, it not give uh, a good feeling because uh, maybe all of you know that on 24th April 2013, uh, when we got the news, actually, uh, if I want to share my experience on that day, uh, I, when I got the news, I went that place, and I saw that uh, people moving around the place and they were, uh, some people were uh, crying, they were so scared and everybody was tense because uh, a big number of workers were under the rubble and everybody was trying to find their beloved person and it was not so easy to be there as an activist, as an as a photographer, and sometimes we um, we listen that the owners, government, they try to say that this is a day, uh, and this is a day they want to mention as a day of tragedy. But I don't want to mention that day as a tragedy or. Uh, uh, it's a day of uh, industrial accident. Uh, I think it's a structural killing. And our feeling about that day is very difficult. And uh, when I was there uh, and I saw that uh, people were uh, under the rubble and um, it was very difficult to uh, stay there worked there as a witness and as a witness, as a photographer, I tried to document uh, the history, uh, the cruel history of uh, Bangladeshi garment workers. And uh, at the same time, we tried to uh, work as a rescuer and our a group of our friends and members of our organization, they worked for 17 days in that place. And, uh, we tried to uh, help them. And after uh, eight years, uh, we haven't seen much more changes in this sector. And um, maybe we can um, think about the situation of COVID that uh, Bangladeshi garment workers, they are facing lots of crisis. The working class people, they are also facing lots of crisis. And when Rana Plaza happened, that time we also saw that people, workers, their family, they hadn't got any time to take uh, rest, to think about their beloved uh, person who, who, who lost their lives and dreams. They were moving one place to another place uh, to find their uh, beloved person, dead body. Sometimes they move. They were moving for justice. They were moving for uh, compensation. Uh, but uh, all of we know that uh, this is a, this is an incident. This is a structural killing, and uh, this is uh, not a very common thing. And it's a, a big impact on our country and all over the world. But um, we thought that after Rana Plaza, our government our owner and international brands buyer, they will take uh, action 
and they will change their infrastructure, they will change uh, their approach on workers' wage, safety, and trade union. But still, uh, we uh, see that our Bangladeshi government workers, they are facing lots of crisis uh, about their wages, as about their safety, and still they are not getting uh, any attention as a human being. When Rana Plaza happened, we saw more than 1,100 workers died. And our owners, uh, they were trying to say that they were learning from this incident. And we cannot uh, um, think that it's a way of uh, learning something by killing more than 1,000 workers. Uh, so still, uh, when we saw about the COVID situation, we see that uh, our workers, they are not getting time to think about their health. Uh, they are um, fighting to um, fighting for their livelihood. So when Rana Plaza happened, that time we, um, we feel that our owner, our government and international brands buyer, they don't think that uh, Bangladeshi garment workers, they are human being, they, are, uh, they have dreams like all other people. Uh, they think that they're only um, like a machine or tool that can make profit. And when uh, COVID situation, we get the same impression. So uh, still uh, the guilty person, the responsible person of Rana Plaza, they haven't got punishment uh, and the compensation law has not been changed. And we don't want to see our workers or victims of Rana Plaza as a beggar because compensation is their right. And, but still the compensation law has not changed. So we, we want to see our workers as a fighter. We don't want to see them beggar, but the whole process of uh, Rana Plaza and after math and after the Rana Plaza, the compensation process, whole thing, I think made uh, the workers and victim like a beggar, but we don't want to see uh, this thing. So thank I can, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to invite some of our other panelists up, but thank you for setting us up. Okay, thank you. Where we were that day and you know, how much progress we've made. So Kalpana, you know, I'd love to hear from you in terms of, what do you think the accord, why was the accord so landmark, right? How did it make workers safer? And what role did brands, manufacturers, and workers play in the accord? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Aisha. Uh, hello, everyone. So, I mean, accord is, a, you know, why it is a landmark agreement? Because it's a binding agreement. It's, it's you know, that is, speaks volumes. Uh, it's not a voluntary piece or like any empty promises that brands and retailers was made in, making for years, which has never made any progress for workers' lives or regarding their safeties. So that's why it is one of the landmark, uh, you know, initiative that we consider. And, you know, uh, Esther Slima has described that how horrified this, uh, you know, industrial homicide was. It was absolutely a preventable accident. And there was many more accident has happened, which, is, which was absolutely preventable, but it's never uh, prevented because there wasn't any uh, binding commitment from the brands, from the retailers, from the manufacturers, which accord has made difference. We started a court campaign in back 2011, but these brands, you know, most of them has been waited to at least see that how, how many more workers can die. So Rana Plaza was the time when we set up the uh, a deadline for them. Uh, then they just, you know, uh, signed the agreement. It is total 200 brands who came together and signed the agreement with global and local union. And it has very clear commitment that it will be working with unions, with workers during the safety inspections. The workers itself can give a voice that how they feel when they are in the factory. The inspection, the accord inspection has done 38,000 inspections in 1,600 factories, which has covered like 2.2 million workers. And it has found 120,000 uh, industrial hazards, like 
fire, electrical, and structural. This initiative has completely, you know, um, uh, canceled 200 factory out of their list because those factories was that, you know, kind of uh, hazardous, like that can be collapsed anytime, like Rana or Rana Plaza or like Hajreen. So, in one sentence that we can say that a court has made a phenomenal change in the ground and it has made a amazing progress. But the brand now they're thinking it is a rocket science to understand that what, what progress has been made. It is not, it is not a rocket science to understand that why they need to again sign on the international accord and uh, continue to protect the progress that have been made in our country and also extend it into a country like Pakistan and uh, Sri Lanka or any other production country. But one thing need to be very clearly say that the code initiative has helping with the inspections, which is like independent inspection done by the court, but the brand and retailers itself did not pay for the corrective action actions in the factories. It is factories who has paid for that. Okay, so it was kind of like a contributory improvement has been done, but now brand is like showing their back to continue with this, which is not done. Great, thank you so much, Kalpana. So from your perspective, you know, brands and retailers didn't put money towards uh, making the building safer. And why you think the accord must be extended is really because of the binding nature that at least brings brands to the table because the work is not yet done. I now wanted to bring up Nazma Apa really because Taslima, you had alluded to this, but what I want is for us to talk about the impact of COVID-19 in terms of garment worker safety. So Nazma, from your perspective, you know, what has been happening? I know you've been out on the streets protesting in solidarity with workers. What are you seeing in terms of safety concerns right now with the pandemic? And how has the brand buying behavior during this crisis really made workers less safe? Thank you, Aisha, and uh, thank you all to organize this important press conference. Uh, because I feel a little bit uh, emotional and very badly feel about the Ridoy and Naslima when they said, and I, my memory goes to eight years and back. So the COVID-19, how the behavior uh, brand are taking, their behavior, first of all, when this uh, last year, February, when they started, uh, the COVID is increasing in Europe, America. The brand are started. Lot of order in cancellation, holding, suspension. And after that, they are asking for discount. And you see that, uh, and also the government also not fair enough with the industry workers, because in last year, 26th of March, the factory, uh, the whole country was locked down and they are not uh, under uh, the only the industry will not lock down and they this uh, they have to work so the workers came to work and then their factory and sometimes the factory manufacturer when they wants to open the factory they want if they want to close down the factory they do and they are like a doll and the candle how they wanted to run they are doing like that so even the workers, when there is no transportation, nothing, the factory was locked down, they went to countryside, 250 kilometer, 200 kilometer, they came by work to work in the garments factory. The workers' salary in April 10th, even in the Bangladeshi law said seven working days, they have to get their wages, but the workers couldn't get their salary. Every day, the workers, are fighting and demonstration for their wages and benefit. And in April, the garments workers didn't get the full salary for, because they didn't have work full day, uh, full month in April. So they get discount. The brand are asking for uh, holding discount, suspension and the discount. That is why 60% salary, also workers are discount for their salary. And every day they are fighting. Even still now, I'm sure the last year, the April salary, even May salary still are not getting the many workers. And then 
they are asking for ID bonuses. The manufacturer doesn't want to give the ID bonuses. 50% ID bonuses, they want it. That is why workers raise their voice and they are protesting. A lot of workers are lost their job. Even the pregnant women, they lost their job. And you know the fast fashion, the women are working and making goods for the European, American, other countries. But our workers, when they work and their life was threatened, a lot of risks. There was not social protection, not much safety issues, even not social distance. They are producing for the factory and they are making a profit for the company as well, a supplier as well as the brand. But the workers have not gained any respect. Even till now, not a single brand are visiting in physical in the factory. They are monitoring in the online monitoring system. So the, if the business is so important, then why the CEO of H&M, Inditex, Walmart, or Gap not in front of the inside the factory with the workers? Because their salary without the workers is not happening. Even that uh, the supplier are also not inside the factory. The only workers responsibility to continue this because the problem is the job is needed for Bangladeshi, other country, less educated uh, workers, especially women, but that doesn't mean they are slave and they are exploiting. The people came to our country for the cheap labor, labor market is low. That is why they are not giving them respect. So, you know, this is the thousands of workers lost their job and especially unhuman things happen with the garments workers in our country and other country. Even now in Bangladesh is locked down. Only the garment sector is open. The government is giving some regulation and guideline, but the manufacturer are not listening. You know, this during the Ramadan time, the workers need to go early and make their uh, uh, food uh, for the fasting and preparing their food and they started work 6 a.m. in the morning and lockdown, there is no transportation. How they go factory? This is the question. They have no transportation. There is not, not sufficient things. There is not social distance and nothing they have done. And still there is so many workers during the eat time, most of the union factory, they are illegally dismissed them. They are threatened by local goons and also a lot of challenges facing. And even, you know, this lockdown, we have another challenge. The when workers have demonstration and raise their voice, they have number of police case against them. Even one garments workers and one public also die during the demonstration when they are asking. So these kind of things are happen and the people are profiting. Even now they are running the continued production, but they are cutting the price, even the double. So that the question is here, when they are selling, do they are selling very low price? Of course not, but the why they are giving less price. That is why still the Eid, uh, uh, our Eid, Eid festival is tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Some of the factories still haven't got their salary, their wages, their benefit. What is the brand his role uh, taking the responsibility? Even our company, the manufacturer getting uh, uh, incentive or what is called that? Sorry, they, they get a lot of money from the government side. Yeah. But this money, when they are taking for soft loan or incentive, whatever, but is this really workers get benefit? Because when workers work, they got the uh, wages. If they don't work, they didn't get because they're hand to mouth. They are they don't have the uh, decent uh, uh, wages or uh, any good uh, wage system. So they're like a daily laborer. So when even the Bangladesh government, yeah, the manufacturer asking for more packages, more benefit. But what is the our things? Because we are fighting for uh, as the pay up campaign with the uh, Aisha, you know how we are fighting for the consumer with the brand. Even the bank, uh, we are demonstration in the street, we are demonstration and we are raising all of the things because the company are very greedy. They are over people profit. 
they don't think about the humans and the people's life and livelihood and the peoples in Bangladesh, the, especially the women's uh, 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 life. So this is very unhealthy competition for the profit, the supplier. They are also not listening and respect because they are only respect and listening to the brand. So the power distribution is very important and the profit share is very important because the workers making the good and they need profit share and they need uh, living wages, they need freedom of association, they need to uh, gender based violence. You know, this COVID-19, the gender bias violence is a key severely attacked at the workplace, even a home, even the road. Even you know, many workers, when they work in the factory, when they lost their job, again, they want to get their job and somebody's salary was maybe 8,500 taka or 9,000 taka. When they newly recruit, their salary was like, who got the 9,000 taka? They are recruited like 8,500 taka. So the worker's salary also declined, declining. The worker's wages are declining. Not a single brand is helping us. We had that. There is a lot of uh, a brand, uh, brand are uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, giving so much money for this program, that program, but nothing is goes to our workers. Nothing goes to, even the supply didn't do anything. So this is the reality that nobody's care about the workers. People need to profit and profit, but our workers threaten that life is rigged. This COVID is very dangerous and kill, but cases increase. But even when the workers in the COVID time have affected by coronavirus, the factory management doesn't want to pay even the hospital bill. And that also we need to fight, that also we need to negotiation. So these kind of things happen in the uh, whole supply chain and the how uh, modern day slavery and uh, affected workers' life and livelihood. Thank you. Nasma, thank you so much for that. So. Um... You know, Kalpona, I want to dig a bit more into the negotiations over um, the new accord. Um, you mm -hmm. know, even though BGMEA is not <clears throat> here with us, if I could summarize their position, it's, you know, that they, A, have said that they won't um, acknowledge um, an, an extension of the accord, but they've also said that the accord is essentially um, the same thing as the ready-made sustainability council that they've established. Um, and to Nazma's point, you know, I think that part of what's happened is that the pandemic um, has shifted the public's focus away from the accord. Um, there's not a lot of understanding in the press about what's been going on behind the scenes. So I'm wondering if you can explain a bit more about, um, you know, how the negotiations have unfolded over the past year or two and you mm -hmm. know how you think COVID has impacted those negotiations. For example, do you feel that brands are kind of using COVID as an excuse to not commit? And, and also what you think about the Sustainability Council, is it just like the Accord? Is it just as good as the Accord? Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth, for these, uh, you know, excellent questions. Okay, so, I mean, definitely the RSC, the Sustainable Council, is not even near to the accord. I mean, nobody should demand it, okay? Uh, the RS, uh, RMG Sustainable Council is a, uh, at this moment, the structures look like there is a union and, and manufacturers. So the, there is a 18 board of directors uh, six seats for union, for two for global, and four for national. Uh, four, uh, six seats for manufacturers, and six seats for the brand and retailers. And that tells, I mean, that clearly tells that it's our imbalanced board. Though it says that there will be no voting problem, there will be consensus. But you know, if 12 people or 12 board goes in one side, then how about 16 don't give consensus or not? Okay, it doesn't make any sense. So where is, I mean, so one way that RSC definitely in, I mean, we shouldn't compare with this with the court, but till now we are accepting, um, you know, RSC and supporting RSC because it is still within the accord framework, uh, but it will be not anymore. Uh, after May 31st, if the brand and retailers don't sign the extension version of the accord in international platform. 
Okay, so it is very clear um, because in RSC without a court, the branch will be not obligated to anyone. And it is too important for brands to get obligated. If they're not obligated, if there is no obligation, then again, we'll become for a self-monitoring empty promises package. And we are not there to accept that after making these eight years of seven years of progress. So in terms of negotiation, um, you know, before the pandemic started, uh, there was a negotiation happening with global brands uh, in a global level and brand was quite okay to discuss on and they were discussing how they can uh, go forward with and especially like five brands was on board with discussion that H&M, Zara, Inditex, Best Seller and um, I think one, um, yeah, as, yeah, I mean, the, it, th those were in the in the discussion board and there are many more like was in lines that they will be uh, you know uh, attending the discussion in coming months and then you know the world got the covid hit and the pandemic is spreading everywhere and brands has i mean we i mean we the trade union and uh, the you know, union activists labor activists we had to uh, deal with so many things during this time like campaigning against a brand to pay the bills. Uh, we, we had to, uh, I mean, there was multiple jobs in international level and in national level as well. So our focus was gone there and brands really got an opportunity to step back from that negotiation. So when the situation was a little better, like uh, during the March, uh, sorry, September, October last year, the global union and NGOs started doing the negotiation once again. But it seems that brand was totally reluctant and they really wanted to throw this accord piece in the trash. That, oh no, we wanted to stay with RSC. I mean, why so? When you know that it is proved that the, you know, after this unimaginable accident uh, or the homicide has happened, it, was, it has been totally proved that the court can make improvement on safety and that can save workers' life, then why in the earth you will be step back and say that we'll be not doing negotiation or we'll be not uh, signing it? So in response to that, our global union has sent a very strong letter and very clearly saying that what would be our position uh, and that has been sent to the old brands who was originally signed the court and that has even sent in uh, 20, sorry, uh, February, 2021. I mean, this year, I think three months, three uh, months from three uh, now, yeah, like three months ago. So now our, and from Bangladesh unions, we have been clearly said that um, we will be not with RSC uh, if the branch is not signing uh, international accord. And I think today there will be a formal letter will go to today or tomorrow. The union will be sending a formal letter to the, um, you know, brands that, uh, with giving a deadline that will be moving from RSC if the accord is not been signed. So from us, it is very clear message from the workers in the ground, from the union from in the ground, and from global level as well that we definitely want all brands to sign on this accord, and we really don't accept that. Uh, they are telling us to sign uh, the agreement with Employers Federation globally, IOE, and we don't want to do that because that will not give us a chance to make a single brand obligated if they violate the clauses of a code. So we want the similar accord that was being working, but it has to be extended in other countries as well. We are not saying that RSC will be not there, but we wanted to say that the brands within the RSC have to be obligated and that will be only possible if the brands sign the international accord. I hope that that gives a clear uh, message. I'm not sure. If you have question, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, that's super, super helpful. And if press has um, more questions for Kalpona, just um, drop them in the chat or raise your hand. So Taslima, I would love to come back to you. Um, one of the, I, I wanna know what, what you think of the accord and also one of the conversations that's happened in, in 
the press lately, or you know, I've I've seen on Twitter is 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 sometimes the accord is described as like an outside entity or a, a colonial entity. Um, and Tazlima, I, I wonder if if you can comment on that, if if that is a helpful way to understand the accord, or if you view it differently. Uh, when Rana Plaza happened, that time it was an uh, emergency situation uh, for our country because we uh, didn't have enough export uh, to rescue people from the rubble. And we hadn't enough expertise about uh, building safety and other things. So uh, that time, I think Accord and Alliance play a uh, better role for us that uh, they survey many factory and give some in input that help us to think about how we can change our building infrastructure and how we can do better for our workers. But I also think that it is very important to uh, make our own um, independent uh, committee or independent body that can uh, make or ensure the safety of factory and other things. But uh, we have a committee like National Action Plan Committee. When Rana Plaza happened that time, that uh, committee started to work, but we don't know what they did. Uh, but I think that it is very important to have our own, um, own uh, expertise, have our own uh, people who can try to intervene and, uh, in this critical time and who can do this, this uh, who can um, think how can we solve the problem of factory and other things. Uh, because um, when we, um, maybe uh, when Rana Plaza happened that time we need uh, urgent help. But uh, for the long time, I think we need our own uh, independent um, body that can uh, try to solve the problem. Uh, this is uh, my uh, point of view. And another thing I want to say about the COVID situation, uh, all of you are talking about uh, what happened. I want, can I talk about a few things? Absolutely. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, when uh, the COVID uh, hit our country last year, that time uh, we saw that our workers were in factory uh, and they were in work and uh, our government and uh, policy they started to talk about uh, social distancing. They started to talk about, and they're giving lesson that people should be stay at home. But uh, these people are not garment workers. These people are not working class people. So they have to work inside factory when the whole nation and the people of the, all over the world, they were conscious about their health. They bound to go factory. And that time, not a single owner were ready to give a single month salary. And it was so surprising that they were making money, profit, for a long time, like more than 40 years, and our international brands buyer who um, take the lion part of the profit, they were also not uh, ready to give any incentives. They were not ready to not to cancel order. So the whole situation was so crowded and our workers were in trade and they were sacrificing their time, their life, their youth uh, to run our our economy, not only our economy, the global economy, but our owner, our government, and especially the brands, but they are not uh, ready to um, compensate because uh, our workers, they are working for the global economy, but the uh, international brands, but they are not ready. And actually, uh, when the second wave came in our country, we saw that there is no, um, uh, scope for testing for workers. We haven't got any information how many workers are infected. Our owners, our government, they are only talking about the economy, the development, but they are not thinking about the health of uh, workers. And there is no 
priority of vaccine uh, for workers. So these are the things going on uh, for our workers. They are facing termination, layoff, uh, wage cut, and still they are working. And today, I want to share one uh, experience and then I will finish uh, my, um, from my end. Today, whole day, I was uh, in Dhaka Medical Hospital uh, with a um, worker who is from Hamim Garments and who is highly injured by uh, police uh, bullet shotgun uh, and police fired uh, shotgun uh, because uh, they demanding for uh, extension of Eid leave. Eid is a Muslim religious uh, biggest festival and the garment workers, they uh, were demanding uh, more than three days um, leave because a uh, owner said that if they get more day, then they will go to village and they will spread uh, corona. Uh, so they tried to just stop them. But uh, last one month, workers um, sacrificed their all weekend. They work as, all weekend uh, as a general duty. But when uh, they wanted their vacation and their leave, owner and government were not ready. So uh, I was with Kanchan Mia, who was a work, who is a worker, and he's highly injured, and he got operation today, and uh, he is in uh, life risk. So uh, a worker, uh, uh, he worked whole month, and for COVID, COVID situation. They are working uh, when uh, when second wave attack our country. That time our uh, government declared a dual policy uh, for workers and all other citizens. The, um, and, uh, the uh, government officials they are they are getting leave for corona, but the workers they are not getting any leave anything. They have they forced to work. And um, our uh, owner, they are saying they have extra power. The poor people, the workers have extra power, so they are not getting um, getting COVID. But uh, we think that they are trying to hide the real situation. And when they want their legal rights, that we want leave because the leave is my right. Uh, if any workers want to um, want to take care of his health and want to take care of for the uh, industry, they need leave to maintain their mental and physical health, but uh, they are not ready to give them even their uh, leave also. They are cutting their ways, they are cutting their uh, bonus, everything. So workers are under threat and they are passing very critical time. They are working for the economy, but the owner, and international brands, they are not uh, thinking about them. They are think that they are only a uh, number. They are not human being, I think. Yeah. So, you know, um, you, I, what I'm hearing from you, Taslima, is in part workers' lives unraveling, but also this total lack of accountability or responsibility from the industry and from brands in particular. Nazma, I would like to, to come back to you to give you an opportunity to, to answer this question of, of what brands should be doing right now. You know, are, are you, um, should they be committing to this binding agreement? Do you want to see the accord extended to other places? Uh, I just wanted before we hopefully can leave a few a few minutes for press to, um, to ask you to, to kind of wrap, wrap up your position on what brands should be doing right now. How are you just un unmute yourself. Nasa. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, of course, the brand should be re, uh, uh, the uh, brand should be re agreement with the legal binding accord, and it is not only Bangladesh. You know, in in Pakistan, Ali Enterprise and different country has also these things, and, uh, and this is not the new thing because I. Uh, when I was 14 years old, first demonstration I did the Saraka Garmes uh, fire incident in 1990, so almost 30 years back. So after that, the Tajri Indana Plaza and series of accident and series of fire incident, and also the death of the workers was amount of 
a murders. So that is why they have to be signed this uh, agreement and accord should be continued and globally it should be signed. And the what need to do, it's not only the safety issues, the brand should be also ensure and accountable for the freedom of association, collective bargaining, uh, uh, living wages and gender-based violence and the ILO convention uh, 195, uh, 190 should be ratified. And the accord is not only help the safety issue because it's my experience because the my uh, I am the uh, our union one of the largest union where we have signed 14 collective bargaining agreement and one factory the owner was not recognize the union and the luckily the accord wants to establish the safety committee and they were asking the union uh, 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 name and uh, telephone number they want to conduct the uh, establish the safety committee when this factory uh, the accord uh, inspector and the peoples visited for the initial meeting so then the union the management and the work uh, and the uh, accord sitting together and establish the union and whose factory also we had signed the collective bargaining where the eight percent salary was increasing so it's not only even the accord has a lot of uh, issues is uh, uh, arbitration system they have a, a grievance system even if any workers has any uh, salary problem or any other issue so that is very important is not only the safety it's also entire the uh, working condition uh, improvement so that is why our bangladeshi manufacturer doesn't want that accord because accord is not only intervene the safety also about the workers right so this is the need uh, we need to be all uh, across the world in the whole supply chain is not only bangladesh and another issue we need legal account uh, bindings as taslimapa mentioned the very early the rana plaza tazrin all the manufacturer they are in usa they are in bangladesh they are shipped it from bangladesh but you know the thousands of workers corporate murder because rana plaza is not an accident they know they know the before that this building can collapse anytime so we need the punishment and we need that people should be in the jail because when our workers are raised their voice even uh, three days back the workers demand for their leave and the police shoot them and uh, they are severely injured and police uh, uh, beat them so why this kind of injustice with the workers that is why the legal accountability and the punishment is important it's not only punishment only for the supplier punishment should be also for the brand because they are the uh, also because we are producing for the brand so, so they are the more responsibility that is why we need due diligence and we need legal, uh, all the different type of um, legislation in europe america and they have to uh, also punish if the workers rights violation and safety things happen and also we need uh, um, a proper uh, to organizing and also the, how we have to get the uh, uh, living wage and also we need to change the concept about the cheap labor you know it's a bad uh, 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 concept and it's make people slavery it's make people life dis uh, disaster also we need women friendly workplace because in bangladeshi garments factory most of the women also left from the factory due to the lack of daycare center and crash even the two years old baby are living in the countryside with the uh, aunt or grandma and they don't have the best feeding right also and mental physical growth also the second generation of the garments workers and their children also vulnerable and disabled so uh, even that uh, Ridoy and Nasima also told that the loss of earning, the, the family is disabled because he's disabled. So that kind of things need to be accountable and that kind of facility is important because, you know, uh, we, uh, the pay up campaign, we also the tip the wages and that we are asking for the pay the bill and so many things and also we are trying to give some emergency support and relief it's not the solution the things need to be profit share that is important and if they are not giving the profit share the system will not change and also we need social protection system 
unemployment benefit and it, uh, insurance policy do this is, is very uh, absent and bangladesh we don't have anything so that kind of things and the government is giving the stimulus package or any soft loan or whatever it should not go direct to the manufacturer because they are not giving anything only they are uh, uh, taking themselves even today they are had a press conference the bg president they said they don't want it to Pay, uh, give this money immediately because the government gave for six month uh, time, but already over year they are not paying. Again, they are asking for money. So money should be social protection. Even Bangladesh is a high risk for the climate change and environmental issue also. And where also affected our women's workers and their children. So these kind of things. And the brand should be punishable. Ban should be penalized. Otherwise, it will not happen because our manufacturer only listen to brand. They are not uh, follow and respect the country law. Even the people in Bangladesh and everywhere, the business people are the politician. And they have the whole power for the administration. And the parliament, they, even our labor laws, day by day, when their amendment, everything goes against the workers, nothing for the workers' favor. So, you know, that is why the brand should be pun uh, pun punishment then they will listen. Otherwise, they are, uh, if something goes to Bangladesh, they are moving to India, India to Myanmar, Myanmar to Vietnam, everywhere. So the exploitation, wherever happened, the problem they have to solve within their, uh, uh, that place, but it's, the exploitation should not move to one country to other country, and it's affected women. So that is why we need the echoes should be continued. And with this kind of all the formula should be also addressing because this is the important issue we need to address. And Nasma, also Nasma. we need to be talking. Thank you. Let me, yeah, thank you so much. Let me just jump in. I wanna make sure that the press is able to, um, to ask all of you a few questions. Um, and if people are able to just stay on just a few minutes more to get these questions in, that would be so great. Um, so in the chat here, we have a question for Kalpona. Um, it's a series of questions. Um, is ASO still the only signatory to the extended accord? Are other brands still at the table? And how long do you have to make something happen here? Uh, yeah, uh, the Liana just shared the link in the chat box so you can see. So for now, yeah, ASO is the one uh, what we have, but the discussion uh, that with the brands yet not over, but we have given giving them a deadline that till, you know, uh, if the accord in international level is not signed on, we'll be moving from RSC from onward June 1st. So that is the union position at this moment. So uh, as I said, that negotiation is, st is still going on with the global union, it's not over yet. But you know, there are some per particular brands, as I named some of them, you know, the H&M has a bigger presence here in Bangladesh. Uh, and they also are one of the first signatory uh, after Rana Plaza, uh, you know, within the accord. So they do understand why they have signed the previous one. So they can be again, uh, in be a leader and lead other brands to sign on this document. So uh, this is my response that where we are now. And I, I saw there is another uh, uh, question regarding funding. So until now, the yes. funding- yes. Uh, Kalmona, you know, Kalmona, can I just jump in and read the question really quickly? Um, so the question is, what happens to funding under the ready-made sustainability, count, sustainability council? So that's sort of the position as the successor to the mm -hmm. accord. And is it sufficient? And are brands retailers committed to funding in the same way that they were under the accord? Sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure people understand. I know that's fine. I mean, it is very, you know, very cloudy understanding at this moment. We really don't know how it, it will be dealt with when a code is not there. But what we know that they are being shopping around for money, like, um, ZIZ, one of the German development corporation, who, uh, who I think willing to fund this initiative, but we will be reaching out to them. If union is not, not there, that how they will be find, you know, how they consider that uh, RSC will be make a real commitment in here. So, and uh, we really don't know that for how the funding issue will be dealing with at this, at this moment, but we know that they're shopping around for funding and for future.
All right, there I'm going to keep. Question here about, so there's another question here. If someone can please explain why brands are declining to renew the accord, um, wouldn't it benefit them to be more ethical to sign up? I guess what's the pushback specifically from brands, especially if they're the ones paying for the factory improvements? Can you please say a little loudly? I cannot hear Anything? probably. Sure. The question is, can someone please explain why brands are declining to renew the accord? Wouldn't it benefit them to be perceived as ethical, especially if they're the ones paying for factory improvements? Um, it wasn't clear to me that they were paying for factory improvements. So can you clarify that? Go ahead. Go ahead, Kalpana. Oh, thank you. Okay, so um, I, you know, my understanding is that brand is not directly paying for any uh, corrective action plan in the factory. They do paying the subscription to their code or, you know, the money they need to pay to their code. So that money goes to the, uh, you know, a code to maintain all their costs and inspection in the factory. So, uh, but they're not doing any repair and renovation in the factories. That needs to be clear. Okay. In the accord, improvements. Just to make that clear, because I think the journalist thought you were saying brands are paying for factory improvements. They're not paying for improvements. They just no, need no. to be a part of the accord, correct? Right. Yeah. And why they are yeah. not? Uh, I mean, why they don't want it to sign? I think they can respond a better way. But what we see that the part of the obligation really irritates them because they wanted to enjoy the bigger piece of pie, but they don't want it to take any responsibilities. So the binding agreement make them to obligate it all the clauses uh, within their code and that can bring them uh, in their native country code, uh, which is they really don't like. This is the only thing I see, but the progress that has been made, there is no way that they will be not protect if they are smart enough. Because, you know, within the accord, uh, um, even the safety, I mean, safety and inspection are cheaper if brands wanted to do that, them, uh, do that by themselves, because that will be more expensive for them. So only problem is it is a legally binding agreement that I consider that why they are reluctant to sign on it. Thank you. Thank you. There's another question here around other than creating public pressure and raising awareness, what are some solid steps that we can do as activists or people working through social media to assure that the accord is renewed? I just say from the Pay Up Fashion Coalition's perspective, you all know that we have you know, been writing to H&M, asking them, given their big presence in Bangladesh, to renew and publicly commit to the accord. But I don't know if any of our other panelists, Nazma, Taslima, have any perspective on how can people show you solidarity right now? Yeah, thank you. Because you know uh, that uh, accord, uh, the, uh, I think also what Kalpuna mentioned rightly also, and that uh, the brand thought the eight years has gone, uh, the people in memory might be uh, gone about this Rana Plaza issue. So that is, and also they are always saying about the expensive, uh, they don't want. So that's not the things but we need uh, the accord and we need some legal binding uh, uh, system so that is why i know because we don't have much time because uh, also in bangladesh is a eid festival until 28th of may so after that locally as a union as an activist and the workers we have to make our demonstration our uh, message to the brand to the consumer call everyone even the in, uh, global union and other uh, uh, global uh, uh, activists they have to also uh, campaign and raise the issue and every day and especially also the american brand they are not support the accord and they make a lot of difficulties and chaotic so how also we can push them also like Walmart Gap. So these people also should do. So that is why the newspaper, all areas, we need to uh, uh, campaign and we have to do something before uh, end of uh, 31st of May, because otherwise it will be difficult. So we have to put pressure our uh, locally, also internationally, and also the local global union and other people who are also laborers, activists in the globe, 
everybody need to work and the workers voice is very important so we can ask and we can demand from that why this uh, accord is important what kind of uh, uh, um, progress and what uh, how they save their life because this accord is very important because we had earthquake, we have a lot of accident, but you know the uh, a lot of training and awareness also save workers' li life. Also the remediation, the building uh, safety fire and electrical uh, safety also. So it is very important. And we I want to, to add a few lines. Yeah, um, um, there's one more question here and maybe Taslima, you can take this question. It's, what's the difference in urgency with this situation than two years ago when there was a lawsuit threatening the accord? Like, do we see an urgency with, you know, it seems like Kalpan and Nazma, you're saying we really need this to happen by the end of the month. So if anyone can respond to that question. Uh, before answering this question, I want to add a few things about uh, your last question that how we can make solidarity uh, with international consumers. Um, I think that uh, for workers' uh, safety, workers' waste safety, their health safety, we need to um, make bridge with others' um, unions internationally at the same time. And the international consumer can make a big impact if they can pressure on brands via that they should cut their profit, they should pay more for each t-shirt. I think this is very important. And we have learned a lot from the Rana Plaza experience that when Rana Plaza collapse happened that time, um, people from all over the world, they started to know about the story behind the t-shirt. And they started to show their solidarity, show their sympathy, and which create a big impact on brands and buyer, and they bound to make Rana Plaza agreement. Uh, we think that uh, this time also, we can uh, always need uh, the international solidarity because uh, the government uh, is not a, Bangladeshi government is not a local industry. Our workers also are part of supply chain. That's why we uh, need a relation with Accord uh, because in our country, uh, I think that we uh, we need an independent body uh, from our country uh, who can ensure safety, who can ensure the workers. So at the same time, from global perspective, we need um, one kind of relation, one kind of working uh, condition within Accord or this kinds of organization. But uh, for our workers' side, we need an uh, uh, independent body uh, in our own country, because uh, we are talking about the development, we are talking about the democracy, but in our country, our workers, our uh, people, they are not practicing democracy, they are not getting uh, their vote right properly, we are living in a political environment of fear, so if we cannot change this, uh, uh, this um, syndicate, this uh, uh, environment of fear, this fascism, we cannot make an independent body that can ensure our workers' right. Uh, so uh, we need this independent body. At the same time, I think we need uh, a relation, but we don't want any control of uh, any other international body. We need a cooperation, not control. I just, I just want to jump in and say, um, Liana from WRC, and I just dropped this into the chat as well, just a few minutes ago, Industrial and um, uh, Uni Global Union have both withdrawn from the RMG Sustainability Council as of just a few minutes ago. So for those of you who are looking um, for news pegs, uh, this is of great interest um, and it says that they are withdrawing I think because it is unenforceable and not legally binding which is much of what we um, are hearing our panelists say here today. Yeah. Yeah, can I just sorry, clarify one thing so um, they're not and I know it's the, just reading at the same time that we're talking yeah so they're not Leanna. yet withdrawing <laughs> but they will withdraw as of June 1st yeah. if the court isn't continued. So this is, I think, a critical difference. And maybe Kalpona can speak to the details on that. Yeah. We just have, yeah, one, thanks question we just have one question here that I wanted to be sure that we answer, um, because I know some press is trying to fall off, which is um, any perspective on what H&M is saying about all this? Why are they saying that they won't commit? 
I mean, all the brands are pushing this to the IOE, like International Employers Federation, rather uh, individual signing. So they just wanted to clean their shoulder. So it is goes to their association and we are not agreeing with it. So negotiation is not withdraw yet. HLM didn't say that we are just moving you know, from the table. Negotiation is still happening. And uh, what Liana was saying that, uh, yes, I mean, I was referring to this news, but I wasn't sure that I can make it public yet or not because we just received email like seven uh, hours ago. And it is not, not from, only from um, uni and industrial, it is also for the local union. We are moving out from SC onward from June 1st if the brands are not signing the international code. It is very loud and clear. Thank you very much, Kalpona. And I appreciate everyone's questions. Um, hopefully we've got to most of them. As you saw, we had some diversity of perspective here. But really, just to sum it up for all of you, the survivors of Tazreen and Rana Plaza, the video that we had played, will make it available to all press with or without subtitles. Um, given the breaking news that Kalpana and Liana have just shared, to Elizabeth's point, we hope that this is a press hook and a newsworthy story to be as this withdrawal is set to happen, that hopefully hearing from Kalpana, Tazrima, and and Nazma is really helpful. If I were to just summarize for all of you, really, it's to say the work that and the progress that the accord has made is significant, but the work is not yet done. And what we have seen is really a pressure cooker situation of worsening conditions um, and the unraveling of safety for garment makers beyond just physical building structures because of COVID. And that under the guise of COVID and all the other ways that union leaders have been fighting to keep workers safe, unfortunately, the di dialogue has stalled. And the union position is very clear here that without a binding agreement, the progress and the inroads that we have made will be lost. And so what we're needing here is not just a binding agreement in Bangladesh, but to take that to Pakistan and beyond, because it's the only way to keep workers safe. So with that, I'd like to thank you all very much. Please join me in thanking Taslima and Kalpana and Nazma. I really appreciate you so much. We'll make the recording as well as all of the links in the chat available to everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Asha. Bye. Asha, thank you. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Bye. Take care. Bye.